Hi friends, Eric here from Around To It RC, and I've got another plane I want to show you today. Now this one comes from Great Plains, and it is the Sport Scale P51 Mustang. Now this is a pretty neat looking plane. What I've done already for you to speed this up a little bit, I've already put the plane together, and what I intend to do next is go over to the work table, show you the plane, tell you what went into the building process, and give you my first thoughts on it. So let's go on over to the workbench and check out the plane. All right, let's take a closer look at the Great Plains Sport Scale P-51 Mustang. Now, before I tell you my initial thoughts about the airplane, let's talk about pricing and availability. Number one, I don't normally name prices on the airplanes that I do reviews on, simply because prices can change over time. But I can tell you where to get this airplane from. You can go to TowerHobbies.com to get this airplane and all the accessories for it, like you see it in front of me, from their website. And I'll be providing a direct link to that website for this plane in the video notes. So be sure to go check out my video notes and go see TowerHobbies.com, okay? All right, now let's talk about the plane itself. It's a scale airplane, boss in ply construction with monocoque covering on it, and I'm liking the looks of it so far. It's got a very detailed instrument panel here in the cockpit with a pilot that came pre-installed, so I'm liking that. It's 50 inches long, and it's got a 56 inch wingspan. Now the flying weight on this plane is six and a half to seven and one quarter pounds, depending on your powertrain setup. And another cool thing about this plane is, you have the option to go electric or glow, and I went electric with this plane, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But let's talk about the setup there. This plane kit comes with the mounting brackets to go electric or glow. It all comes included in the plane, so you don't have to buy any extra parts for that. So that's pretty cool. All right, now let's talk about the assembly for the, the tail here. The, uh, one of the cool thing was the horizontal and the vertical stabilizer controllers. The control surfaces came pre-hinged, which sped up the building process that much more, so I'm liking that. And the assembly on the plane went quick and easy. Now let me tell you how it went. All you have to do is slide in the horizontal stabilizer into the slot. The vertical stabilizer has two bolts that go all the way through the plane. And then you tighten it down with nylon bolts on the bottom. Now the really cool thing about that is it's self-aligning once you put it in there and tighten it down. The, the, the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizer go into slots and it's self-aligning so that's pretty cool. I'm enjoying that. Alright, on to the wing. It's a 56 inch wing. The aileron surfaces came pre-hinged and it's a two-piece wing so I had to bolt it together first before I could put it on the plane. But the really cool thing about this is it breaks down for quick transport. All the, the wing is held in by two nylon bolts underneath right here on the fuselage. Just screw them in and go with it. So that's pretty cool. All right, now let's talk about the canopy. You've got a magnetic canopy right here, which allows you to access the batteries for this plane if you're going electric. And I'm using two Electrofly batteries. These are two three cell 11.1 volt 3200 milliamp hour batteries that are used to fly the airplane with. And that's pretty cool. Let's put that back here the canopy back in like that. All right, now let's talk about the power setup. Now remember I said I'm going electric, so I've got a Rimfire 0.55 electric motor here and an Electrofly Silver Series 60 amp ESC. Now, that should provide plenty of power for the plane if you like to go electric or you can go glow. It's your choice. Now, the controller for this airplane that I'm going to be using is a Futaba 2.4 gigahertz fast radio system. This is a six channel transmitter and in the plane I've got a Futaba seven channel receiver. So that's pretty much about it in the nutshell on the plane. Uh, the build time on the plane took me a couple of days. Now that's not two full days, that's just me coming out here in the afternoon and working on it in my workshop for a few hours and then coming back and finishing it up the next day. And that's pretty much about it about the airplane. So let's go on out to the flying field and give this bad boy a try. Eric, this is the tower. You were clear for takeoff. Okay, it's time for the first roll. Alright, let's try a loop. Nice loop.
Okay, now it's time for a fast flyby. Nice. This plane's got plenty of power. The plane's doing so well, I decided to try some inverted flying. Alright, that's some pretty smooth inverted flying. I'm really enjoying this plane. Well, for the maiden flight, it's just a little windy today, but even on low rates, I'm not having a problem flying the Mustang. And the scale looks make it a real eye catcher. Okay, let's do a full throttle high rate roll. All right, I'm having a great time with this plane, and it sounds so cool on the flyby. Well, I'm thoroughly impressed with the P-51 Mustang. Let's go ahead and bring it in and take it back to the shop. Well, there you have it. That was the maiden flight of the Great Plains Sport Scale P-51 Mustang. And let me give you my final thoughts about the airplane before we get out of here today. Now, the maiden flight overall, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. I really enjoyed flying the airplane and can't wait to fly it again. Now, let's talk about the characteristics of the first flight and what I did pre-flight and during flight, okay? Now, the control surface throws, I had set up for dual rates, low and high, per the manual. That's right, I did read the manual, because who knows better how to set up those control surface throws than the manufacturer. So, after the first flight, I can tell you that I'm going to adjust them just a little bit to suit my personal preferences, but the stock settings in the manual are a good place to start for you. Okay, now let's talk about the CG. Now, there's going to be a couple of different opinions about this on how to do it. Some people prefer the two-finger method, where they hold it check the balance, put the plane down, make an adjustment, pick it up again with their two fingers, set it down, make another adjustment. Now for me, and this plane, because it's such a, a larger plane than the foam planes that I usually fly, I recommend using a CG machine. And I'm using the, CG, uh, the Great Plains CG machine. And the reason behind that is, if I get the plane set up where the, the center of gravity if near, is near balanced, I can put it on this CG machine and go hands-free with it. I can then adjust the, the tail weight or the nose weight or shift the battery uh, pretty much without having to set the plane down, pick it up. But that's just me and my personal preferences, okay? Now, as far as the uh, flight time goes, I flew it for about six minutes and that's really pushing it. I think on a maiden for a plane of this size, you should really go about five and just feel your way out as you do, as you do more flights with the plane. Uh, a five to six minute flight would be a good starting point there. And the powertrain on this plane, I didn't have any problems with it. As you remember, this is a Rimfire .55 brushless outrunner motor with a two LiPo battery setup for the plane. And even though it was a little windy today, I didn't have any problems buzzing around the field doing some mild 3D, such as loops, rolls, and some inverted flying. And the plane handled it very well. So I'm, overall, I'm real happy with that. Also, as far as the plane goes, uh, would I recommend this plane for you? You know, I can't really answer that question, but what I can tell you about this plane is it's not for a beginner. Uh, the plane of this size, weighing almost seven pounds, having aileron control, things of that nature, it's not really a good beginner plane. You have to have some basic understanding of uh, plane flight and building along with setting up the CG on the plane. So I would recommend this plane for the intermediate to advanced flyer, and you're going to have a blast with it like I did for sure. And that's really about it for the plane. Overall, the plane flight characteristics, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I'm going to give the plane a thumbs up again. I'm glad you got to see me again. That's about the end of the video review, and we'll see you later on the tube, okay? Let's talk about pricing and availability. Ooh, that was close. Now, this is my personal preference using the CG machine on the... Are you done yet?
Are you done yet? 